Hello and welcome to Saint Lucia. Bienvenue. Bonjour. Ça va? Welcome to our global roadshow, and we are so excited. Are the foodies in the house? Listen, if you are joining us, come on, let us know exactly where you're joining us from. And by the way, how have the roadshows been so far? Have you been enjoying them? Did you catch our culture, community, and arts episode last week? Well, if not, please, when you're done here, just go down and make sure you are visiting our YouTube channel, Travel St. Lucia. Make sure that you subscribe and that you're clicking that notification bell to make sure that you're grabbing all the new uploads. Those uploads might be very, very useful to you to share with a family, a friend, a client, so you know exactly what you'll be doing when you get to St. Lucia. Saka fet. So that's how we say, how are you in St. Lucia? And by now, you know the answer. Come on, come on, come on. If you're feeling good, just say muela, muela. To our folks in the United Kingdom and um, other parts of Europe, certainly, I, I know you had that heat wave but then now you're having rain, right? I don't mean to rub it in your face, but we are 83 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we invite you, come on. All are welcome to St. Lucia. And certainly we see that our friends from the United Kingdom are spending longer in the island. So today is gonna to be a really great episode for you because you have a lot more to put on that bucket list of St. Lucia culinary gastronomic delights. What about Canada? Are you with us today? Come on, let us know in the chat which part of Canada you're from. Ontario, come on, Newfoundland, come on. Um, and let me ask you, because we certainly had India on last week, anyone from Asia out there, Africa, and certainly our family from Latin America, if you're on, let us know in the chat. Of course, our experts are going to be on to tackle any questions that you have, because we have so many great people for you to meet today, and we certainly have some great recipes to share as well, as well as some tools that will help you to navigate that culinary journey when you get to St. Lucia. Let's continue with our shout outs. So our Caribbean family, we're looking forward to having you. Trinidad, are you in? Listen, we have some recipes you're going to be very interested in. And our family in Martinique, certainly right throughout the Caribbean, we say, a warm St. Lucian welcome to you. If you're in the United States, come on, tell us where you are joining us from. And listen, let's just get into it. Let's sharpen up our knives. We are moving away from our hotels. You know, we have some of the world's best accommodations. But today, it's all about culinary traditions and independent dining in St. Lucia. And before we jump in, let us share this fact with you. Did you know that St. Lucia has a vibrant independent dining scene from five-star gourmet dining to pit stops, food trucks around the island? And you know, the very best part about St. Lucia is there are no designated tourist areas. We invite you to enjoy all of St. Lucia, albeit responsibly. But let me ask you, do you know what this is? <laughs> Let me tell you, this is Mother Nature. Um, this is us being so resourceful and recycling these 45 gallon drums. And we bake our lovely coconut cakes in that. Love that. And moving on, I want to share with you some really good delights. This is dessert. I always start with dessert. This is the Pemi, which is a lovely cornmeal dessert, which has lots of flavors spices, there's vanilla, there's nutmeg, there's cinnamon, and you wrap it up in that banana leaf. Or in St. Lucia, they actually wrap it in the callaloo leaves until you can eat the whole thing. Um, cassava cakes, you've seen us make those before on our series, and they're both sweet and savory. So whether you want to have some smoked herring in there or some cherry, that's great. These are my favorite. These are savory acras or saltfish fritters. Love them. And let me just tell you, you know that because of all the influences, the food is very interesting. Those little green balls 
farine ball. So it's the byproduct, I would say, of the cassava flour making process. And you combine those, um, that bit with avocado and that's served up nicely with any kind of stew. Really, really good. Have you seen your favorite yet? There is so much more to come. And, and of course, the Castries Market, and we do have a market in Sufre and right across the island, Castries Market has been open since the 1890s. It's one of the very best places for you to stop in and get your provisions. Today, I have to tell you, since we're doing culinary, is dedicated to our farmers right across the island. You know, when we talk about tourism, we always talk sustainability. And so thank you very much for your service to our farmers right across the length and breadth of St. Lucia. You absolutely help to keep us alive, literally. Now, Helen's Daughters is a wonderful initiative and it's a collective of women and it is really there to empower, strengthen these networks of rural women who work in agriculture. And let me just tell you, they have these wonderful sessions on what they call their Ag Academy. You get it, Agriculture and Academy. And recently they've actually signed an, a memorandum of understanding with Export St. Lucia. So they're literally really working to make sure that the crops that are being grown are finding a market, but certainly that all the members of Helen's Daughters are um, well taken care of and supported. And so as you go through our island, our fishermen are also very important. They provide that fresh catch. And let me tell you, this, this now, I want to share with you just some of the faces of our chefs on that national culinary team of St. Lucia. They make us proud every time they compete, but it's not about competitions. It's about what they're cooking for you at or various hotels, restaurants, and certainly all the eateries around the island. And many of them have dreamt of being in the culinary arts for many, many years. And, and we want to share with you later on a little program that's really um, been very, very successful in engaging young people in the culinary arts. You And the mentors are so very important. Mentorship, so important. You, you know what? A lot of folks do comment on the food in St. Lucia and that of our national culinary team. And I will tell you, that volcanic soil is amazing, first of all, but certainly it is the attitude of our chefs. They're very creative. They love to connect everything back to their roots. And so that has really led to a great level of success. So we're very, very proud of them. And, and let me tell you, it's not just the National Culinary Team. This is Chef Nina Compton. Have you met her? I mean, listen, you may have met her on season 11 of Top Chef. She was certainly voted um, to be fan favorite. But more than that, she actually owns two fabulous restaurants in New Orleans. So if you're literally stateside and you're visiting New Orleans, I want you to go in and support this sister of the soil. Why? Because she is so approachable and her food is the very, very same way. And, and make no mistake about it, by the way, um, she is a James Baird award-winning chef and a very, very proud advocate of the Caribbean cuisine. If you're in the New York tri-state area or wherever you are in the States, we also have Chef Sean Benjamin. He actually was a Wall Street banker and he ended up just following his true passion. And so if you want one of those, um, we call it a bougie brunch or a very fancy dining experience because we know dining is not just about the food or the presentation, it's the atmospherics, it's the lighting, it's the music, it's all of that. So that's Chef Shorn. Thank you for representing us so very well. Now remember to stay connected with us here in St. Lucia. It's Travel St. Lucia on all our channels and make sure you are subscribed again to our YouTube channel because you will get all the latest content. So much to share with you, pardon my passion. Today is gonna be a cornucopia of flavors. I'll take that, thank you. <laughs> is that the right side? <laughs> Listen, let me tell you, our fishermen 
are so amazing and um we're gonna be um taking a look very shortly but guess what i brought in our resident foodie come on show your face raquel john you've met her a couple of times raquel you're a foodie Hi. aren't you <laughs> yes i am i'm, good I'm to have so you. excited to be here <laughs> thank you so much for having me today richard this oh. is my episode oh. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely what's your favorite time of the year raquel because we do have lots of great festivals here in saint lucia where we certainly celebrate the um fisherman's feast um what's your favorite time of the year in saint lucia for me my favorite food time would be October. Now, this is our Creole Heritage Month. So in this time of year, you get to taste all the flavors of St. Lucia. We're talking green fig and saltfish. Um, you had earlier some acra, some pemi. And my little tip is that I kind of pace myself because, you know, in the breakfast, you have the cocoa tea. And then by lunchtime, you want to have a little pigtail bouillon or crab callaloo. So this is really my favorite time of year. You get to hop to the various communities. So I definitely recommend if you're a foodie like me to come visit us in October for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, folks, today on today's episode, you're going to see St. Lucia takes you, we're going to take you way beyond the pitons and way beyond the jaw dropping vistas. Let's give you a little bit of geography because a lot of our accommodations and certainly a lot of our dining, independent dining is in the north. Let's start in the north of the island we are heading up north to the rodney bay area this is an important area right raquel yes most definitely richard it is the capital of shopping entertainment dining and it seems to have this extra buzz during jazz, carnival, even cricket time. So this is definitely a spot to check out when you're in St. Lucia. There is nothing like that, uh, Raquel, when those festivals are happening and everything is a buzz. And then certainly we understand that small businesses are the backbone of our economy and the linkages um, in the tourism um, industry are really what keeps us alive, particularly for us here in St. Lucia. You have a surprise for us, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> right now we're going to bring on, um, what should I call them? A culinary couple. I think that best describes them. What would you say? I, I agree with you. You know, you know, we know a thing or two about romance here in St. Lucia. So let's be a big chef and little chef. Chef Rosie and Mark Joinville. Life is all about experiences, and when you're looking for a great culinary experience, you really need to come into Rodney Bay and make it to Big Chef or Little Chef. I'm here with the proprietors, Rosie and Mark Joinville, and this, I have to tell you, is a St. Lucian love story. Hello! <laughs> Hi Richard. How are you today? I'm good. We're good. It's <laughs> really good to speak with both of you. And I really need to hear the story from the very, very start. How did you two meet? You want to begin, Mark? You do yeah, that. I, we I have to was see if we have to see a... if the story is the same. <laughs> no, we, we <laughs> met at San Antoine restaurant. Uh -huh. I went there being a special branch officer and with some VIPs. You were in security. Yes. Okay. And um, met Rosie uh -huh. at the San Antoine. And that's when I was signed up and I started out for a date. Okay, I noticed you didn't say how long ago this was. It was many moons ago, right? That's 37 years ago. Wow. He persuaded us we were to go out <laughs> as a group. And we went to see the Mighty Sparrow. Wow, was, Calypsone. Yeah, which is... Calypsone and Calypso yeah, King. Very Love cool. It. And we went to another restaurant for dinner. Yeah which was probably your whole month's salary, I think, at that time. Wow. <laughs> but it worked out. But, and then, say, say what happened that <laughs> night. I, I asked her to marry me. 
Really? Okay. And she said yes. Wow. Yes, I said yes because I thought you would go, well, mm, ah, and then, no. I don't, on the wedding day, <laughs> she said to me, she moved the veil, she said to me, I'll call you a bluff. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't think that he would go. That was one date, the really? first date, yeah. Wow, and you're yeah. together 37 yep. years we later. We are, yes. yes. It's, wow. It's wow. a little cheesy, but it's kind of good, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of you good. know, life is all yeah. about stories. Yeah. So listen, I love this location. I mean, what an amazing location. You could literally pull up in fish your off. own boat. Yep. And, and fish off, yep. for sure. We do have sure. a jetty behind uh -huh. us, so you can pull up in your own boat. Lovely. Um, it's a property that actually Mark built with... Um, our surveyor and um, a labor of love so he did this restaurant it's all local quarry stone and um, the, all the doors are local wood as well um, made by a solution carpenter wow. and in fact if you go through eventually into Big Chef you'll notice our tables there are all wooden they're white cedar from here um, they do have a program where if you take down the trees you replant Mm. But you're allowed to use the local wood, send it to the um, manufacturer, etc. Yes. Makes it that much more special yes. too and so, authentic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and all the red brick as well. That's from the quarry, um, Ferens, 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 Ferens Quarry. They do the red brick. What do so, we have here, Jade? Uh, the red sangria. Sir. Wow, a red sangria. All red. sangrias are good. Yeah. Excellent. So we do a white, we do a sparkling, and we do a red and a rosé. Uh, and and for clarity, we're sitting in Little Chef, which you typically use as an event space. Yes. And so it's great if folks have their private groups. Yeah. Could be a wedding, a birthday, etc. Perfect. How has dining changed over the years? And let's let's now talk about because we're going to head into the Big Chef in a short while. How has dining changed, and how have you adapted? What has Your changed for problem. me? in terms of the dining experience, that the solution for people has changed a lot more. They go or they come out to dine a lot more than before. Mm -hmm. The days of I'm cooking at my home has totally almost gone through the window. Mm -hmm. And the solution adopt to the idea that we should go out and eat or go out and have a drink or right. go out and socialize. Before people leave their work and they still go to home, especially when we use the terminology housewife, every, every woman believes this. she's a housewife, so she goes and cook for the for <laughs> husband to come out there. It's a different so time now. Now everybody are now dining out. So the entire dining experience has gone through some some some, some, some solutions, um, um, blood stream right now. Yes. So at least once a week they want to go out and do something. But, so but in Rodney Bay is also still quite a few EP hotels yes. and, and in the north generally right. and so you do have a fair amount of tourists as well we do and, and at, certainly at least it's well. a 50 50 yes, first, yes because at least uh, our returning guest factor our local returning guest factor is huge I mean yes. I'm talking about uh, I always tell the, the tourists in, in, in Brony Bay when they come in to me I tell them sorry but I I know you're gonna do well but these people are coming in the solutions are there, so it's gonna be like 50 50. Yes, cream, yes. Cream, cream on top of the, of the pipe, the local pipe we have. So yes, and I think if you're visiting, is, yeah, sorry, that is what changed us or changed mm -hmm. dining. The people has now moved to a more um dining out kind yes. of experience, and they now has changed the habit of change. They need more, they need a lot yes. more adventurous. Yeah, tell me a little bit about the, the menu for Big Chef and and, and, and and let's talk about Little Chef as well. And Little Chef is formally tapas on the base. Right. So just for so, those folks that are returning. Right. So Little Chef really has become a seafood and tapas. Mm -hmm. um, what we're encouraging people to do is to enjoy the, all the local seafood, to enjoy its tapas, to enjoy the cocktails, to enjoy the view. Mm -hmm. And if perhaps they want to come here and have um, a great mango mojito, mojito margarita, and then join us in Big Chef, that's wonderful. Right. So perhaps we can do a combination of both. You can have a little outside dining and then you can go through to air conditioning. Um, we do special uh, events here, so we're known to do private dinner parties here. Um, we've had dinner parties from 12 to 70. We've actually had people get married here, which has been amazing. We've set the whole deck um, and then they've gone through into dinner. We've had anniversaries, birthdays, brunches. As well, right? Brunches. Yeah. We've had um, jazz. We've had... 
Rob Zaytaylor on sax. Reggae we've nights. had reggae right. nights. We've Martin had time, reggae Cuban, nights. Cuban Cuban nights. Ronald yeah. um, Boo Hinkson plays. We, yes, at, we've um, had Boo. We've had um, Kenson play on piano. We've but had regularly, different though. Different theme nights. Regularly, yeah, yeah. Every they, month we've done something. Which yeah. is fabulous. So there's and we've had people dancing. This is a very outdoor, lively, a yes. uh, little more easier going um, location. Um, so this is a sampling of the tapas So this menu. is a little bit more oh, fantastic. Fun. The tapas actually was, it's funny enough I must say that, that we, we were in London one day mm. and went to Soho and then Rosie was searching for, because we were in Barcelona and then we were looking at yes. the, the concert of tapas. So we decided to go to London and see how based on what we had here. And then we went to, to Soho, and in Soho we found an identical restaurant, which is long tunnel like this. Wow. And we were able to look at it and said, oh, we can conceptualize our tapas the exactly. same way. And then the same way. That was what the drive behind tapas for us. And then we decided that we're going to make new tapas, but more with solution, top Caribbean tapas. We use more of the seafood and the aromas and everything else that we can. And the seasonal, use, seasonal um, yeah, yes, and vegetables even vegetables and exactly, provisions. And even using the local seasoning to create that beautiful, tasteful dish. That we Fantastic. And then with Big Chef now, you are doing the continental favorites. Yes, yeah, so correct? Big Chef is, but it still has Orchestra. a Caribbean twist. Okay. Um, so Big Chef, as you see when you go through, um, it's an air-conditioned three dining rooms with a private dining room at the bottom that holds 22. Um, and it does a range of steak and seafood, but it does um, everything from porterhouse to fillets to ribeyes to aged steaks. We age our own steaks to snappers, to dorado, salmon, the lamb. Mm. Um, it does carry, obviously there's a need, we always have one vegetarian, a vegan dish, um, gluten-free. We have one seafood pasta dish on there as well. Um, it, you know, we follow a lot of the more modern chefs now. Right. Um, obviously everything's accessible to our chefs as well. Right. And we have a very, very young team. So, and they're enthusiastic right. and they, they are, have access to different platforms and everything and they're all into watching Food Network and yeah, they're very creative and they're very creative and so you end up doing a lot of things in house so you also have a bakery we also so the have bread a bakery is, is done by you yeah right? so all the bread so we started um, we do bread and we do flavored butters so we do a mango butter we do I a get the bread butter. and the butter and, um, <laughs> and I could have that for the entire night and sorry we confession. started yeah so we basically started doing it with um, give us an idea of the type of well, butters we, that you make we do a mango and ancho. We do a mango butter, a raspberry butter. We do um, a port. We do an anchovy capers. Different ones. Different Lovely. ones appear at different times, different seasons. Avocado. Um, we do a turmeric butter as well. But the thing about it is, we we do want to. We do a raisin and nut bread. That's usually what comes to the table, or a mixture of that with multigrain and whole wheat. Um, all our breads are made just next door. We have a range of about 20 different ones. And at next door, we also make our own desserts. Um, so I'm still very much involved in the desserts and the bread um, and the kitchen too. So Marcus very much does all the purchasing, all the um, payrolls, all yes. the Operation office aspect. operations. Financial, financial aspect. Yes. Um, so it's a good team. Rosie has a line of biscuits for your furry friends. <laughs> so next time you're here in St. Lucia, look out for those. They're sold island-wide, yes. right? And 10% goes to slaps, to the animal ah, society. Yeah. Fabulous. Yes. So I knew we, that somehow. Yeah, yeah it's very, very cool. nice. We did that during, we don't speak about the period yeah. before. No. But uh, <laughs> we got, when we were doing, thinking of different things we could do, we did dog biscuits, we did all our bread and... So we you're connected to the community. Yeah. Love that. And we and have, two of our chefs are actually farming, so some of the vegetables that you get, yeah, board, you'll get tonight, mm -hmm. like the sweet potato and the, and um, lettuce, the lettuce, the, the number, greens, the potato. tomatoes, all that comes from them. Yeah. So in some retrospect, even though we've all suffered and really hated COVID, um, we've had some great vegetables produced by the chefs. We've learned to do great breads. We've learned to rethink our products, yes. um, redo our menus. We've got a new menu coming out at the end of August. So we change our menus every six months at Big Chef and every six months at Tapas too.
And that's what life should be about. It's about making the best of what you have. And thank you too for speaking with us. Oh, Richard, it's us. a pleasure. Thank you very much, Richard. It's and good to see you here rather than modeling. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's right. Those two guys, they modeled on the same catwalk. That's, that's yeah. a private joke. And this will that's not true. be included. I forgot exactly. that. Exactly. Take it off. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing them, it's in. That's true. Thanks so much. From Little Chef and Big Chef, <laughs> Rosie and Mark Joinville. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for all you do for us. So. You gotta love love and people who have a passion for what they do and bringing the creativity. Um, big up to all the um, aspiring chefs out there or, or students who are at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College as well studying hospitality. Um, you, you really are going to be great. So keep um, creating and experimenting, right? It's now to show you that critical link that we have um with or young people and the culinary arts remember i told you the food is delicious because of the volcanic soil but regardless of how beautiful saint lucia is people always talk about our human capital or people and a huge part of our sustainability efforts um, center around the program the chefs in school program which is executed and is part and parcel of the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association, a nonprofit which plays a vital role in facilitating tourism sector development and management on our island. The Chefs in School program is an initiative that's been around for many, many years. I think 2013 is when it started. And the program, it really does pair the students with the best of the best mentors and inspiring culinary leaders who help like chef robbie here who you will be meeting shortly and it really helps the students to hone their skills in the area of the culinary arts and as you heard earlier there's also culinary science so very very important life skills way beyond just a career and it certainly teaches them how to cook with passion, pardon the pun, and there are other related skills from the various facets of culinary arts. So it's a very, very nurturing program, and it really does help us to um, inculcate and nurture that level of pride that the students leave with, um, which is all about sharing the very, very best that St. Lucia has to offer. The program is funded through the Tourism Enhancement Fund, and the fund is voluntary for visitors to the island, and visitors can choose to contribute $2 US at their front desk or wherever they're staying. And so next time you're coming to St. Lucia, ah, look at those fabulous fish cakes that they're learning to make. Um, so you make a contribution of $2 if you wish. And next time you come to St. Lucia, you will see and taste just how far a voluntary contribution of $2 can actually make a huge difference. So very, very proud of this program. This is our chef's in school program. Very, very good program from the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism association and you know what this is a really great foundation program and we certainly look forward to this um, paying really great dividends in the lives of our tourism um, team members and let's hear from one of our team members right now ever since I was young I really like food I like to eat I like to cook when I'm in the kitchen I just feel calm I really I'm really happy I'm in my elements and it's just it's just amazing I, I just love food I like to cook I like everything about food I just wanted to thank SLHDA and um, Bank of St. Lucia for the opportunity to take part in this activity
warms your heart, doesn't it, Raquel? It really does. And it kind of brought back some memories because I remember in school in food and nutrition class, that was something I looked forward to. And I can see that a lot of my classmates went on to become chefs right here in St. Lucia. So this really was honestly a pleasure and a sight for me to see. Fabulous. And speaking of pleasure, there is a very addictive substance that the entire world enjoys. But St. Lucia, she owns her place at the top of that game. We're talking about chocolate. And have we got a surprise for you? We have a sneak peek. You ready, Raquel? I'm Are you guys ready? definitely ready. Let's get some chocolate inspiration right now. This has never been seen before. Let's head in to Project Chocolat. Welcome to a multi-sensory experience. I, I promise you, you will never ever look at chocolate in the very same way again. This is set among the rainforests of a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Soufre and it's one of the oldest working cocoa farms in St. Lucia. Set on the Rabo Estate, um, it's a six acre outfit. And as you can see, there is lots of retail therapy here. Lots of different um, types of chocolate for you. 72% um, might be my favorite, but at the end of the day, folks, it's a uniquely immersive experience. And again, you will never look at chocolate the very, very same again. Now, they partner with um, cocoa brewers in St. Lucia. And by the way, I'm there sampling a really amazing cacao beverage, which is the sweet caramel cocoa vodka. It is really amazing. There's a cocoa gin as well. It's really an amazing spot. Um, where they draw on their expertise as both a cacao grower and also as a chocolatier. There's a fabulous bear um, option as well. Try the dark ale or go for something else. What they've managed to do in this one space is combine the hedonism of luxury chocolate with sustainable cacao farming by way of their adventurous spirit and their beauty products as well. So everything from moisturizers to nourish, that is not a cup of coffee, by the way, or cocoa, that's actually a beauty product. They're diffusers. And this was one of my favorites. I mean, let me, let me, let me show it to you. Some really fantastic desserts that you could find here. They're fabulous brownies. Did I mention that they do a fabulous coffee as well? There's some really good options here. But this was my favorite. We had to stop filming because <laughs> I had to have it all. Um, we are walking through the food pavilion here at Project Chocolat and you know, it's really an immersion into their cacao cuisine. Did you see that? Cacao nachos? Oh, I'm getting tongue-tied just talking about it because it was such an inspiring space. And their team really does make you feel very, very welcome. And certainly with true Caribbean solution hospitality, it just was an amazing experience. You get a chance to taste their award-winning micro-batch chocolate and the cocktails are pretty amazing as well. I definitely think that this is a place for you to visit. I mean, there are lots of great spots for photo opportunities. You know, that's why we travel, right? We have to have our bragging rights. And of course, you have to leave your mark on the happiness wall here at Project Chocolat in Soufrère St. Lucia. I mean, this is why we travel. We are in search of bragging rights to make us happy and to share with our friends. That is our sneak peek of Project Chocolat. And by the way, stay tuned because there is going to be a grand prize of five nights at Rabo Hotel exclusively by Hotel Chocolat. Raquel, talk to me. 
Did you wipe oh your, your lip God. already? I'm in a whole <laughs> different world right now. <laughs> I love chocolate. And you had me have that cacao burger. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. chef's kisses. I can't wait to taste that one. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore because honestly, it is a sp listen. And they literally walk. That was just one part of the experience because it starts. I told you it's on six acres, but it starts yeah. by going through the cocoa groves. And you can, that's where you now go to do your bean to bar or chocolate decadence tour where you make your own chocolate bars from scratch. How amazing would that be for a souvenir, right? Especially for those who are honeymooning or those that just have a sweet tooth. Raquel, I'm signing you up, okay? But yes. <laughs> also, there are lots of other things. So it was just a sneak peek. Let's move on because we'll be here all day because we love chocolate. All day. You know By the way, I got, you, I got you a bar. I know you prefer the 72. I <laughs> do. Thank you. <laughs> right, you yes. And I also brought you some fabulous... Mm, mm. Gosh, I'm so glad I told you this. This is the salted caramel cacao vodka liqueur. Amazing. Wow. Listen, let's let's move on. Let's let's head over to Barrigo Bay because there's some really great options there. Leaving the north behind for a while. Let's head to Marigo Bay, certainly a well-known Riviera and home of some fabulous movies back in the day, including Dr. Doolittle's. You love that bar and, and restaurant, don't you? I most definitely do. The drinks, the food, the ambience. And I also love Chateau Maigo. That's another popular spot. Ooh. Fresh food, hot. Let me tell you, sitting down by the sea, it's really lovely, Richard. And what's your favorite down there? Uh, you know, I love Chateau Maigo. That means House of Seafood, by the way. By the way, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat because our experts are here. Um, but I also love JJ's. JJ's Crab Nights. Amazing, Delicious. right? <laughs> Amazing. And you literally take a boat ride that lasts for five seconds, uh, five minutes. Um, the water taxis that operate there in Marigold Bay. Some really good options there, you know? Yeah, love that. Oh, All right, goodness. let's move on, folks. Did you know? Did you know that St. Lucia offers the ability to taste the world through a collection of well over 25 independent restaurants and bars across the destination? And best of all, several of them have been operating in excess of 25 years. You know, I meant to say that about Chateau Migo. I mean, they've been around for a very, very long time. And certainly there are some other great options such as, and we head up to the north again, this is Razmataz serving traditional tandoori, Nepalese cuisine, Indian cuisine as well. And then there's Kilargo. I don't think Rekha was born when they were established circa 1989. And you know what? They really make you feel like family. I'm not that guy that goes into a restaurant and likes for everybody to know my name, but they really broke me down. By the way, you may be wondering if we have a dining directory. Well, here it is on your screen and not to worry. Don't need to do a screen grab. It will be available for you via link. And this is right across the island in St. Lucia. We will offer that to you. Don't forget the October is very special if you're all about the local Creole cuisine. Je ne Creole is in October. Sorry about that. And let's move forward now so I can give you that. And then there are also some great options right around the island. And we have these maps available for you as well. So you can plan that culinary adventure and journey when you're with us. And then let me just tell you, we have some great culinary based tours, including these. Um, on your screen at the moment and we certainly our team is on and we're ready and willing to make those available to you our destination management companies are a really good resource this is also available for you a listing of all our dmc's tour companies that can arrange for you those culinary itineraries that are so fabulous and for those of you from the united kingdom we know you're staying a lot longer so you have more time all right so um getting First of all, though, cookbooks. Isn't it so important to have these recipes at hand? But let me tell you, Chef Dennis, 
operated a restaurant for many, many years in the United Kingdom. And this is his fabulous taste of the French Caribbean, including St. Lucia. And you can also find this fabulous book by Giselle Charles, which is a very, very small book, by the way. And you can certainly get these books in the Kindle version. You can find them all on You Know Where, that place that starts with an A, right? <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> Some really good options. And by the way, one of you will be winning this fabulous book of, you know, the St. Lucian banana is amazing, right? You know that, you know that. So these fabulous banana recipes will be yours um, from dessert to savory. Now, in getting to St. Lucia, it has never been easier to get here. And we are so fortunate that out of the United States, you can definitely connect out of major U.S. cities such as New York, New Jersey, Charlotte, Dallas, Texas. And guess what? That Dallas flight is coming back earlier than we expected. So pretty soon, close to Thanksgiving, you'll be able to fly nonstop from DFW to St. Lucia. And then out of Miami, you can certainly get to St. Lucia. And there is also Delta out of Atlanta um, daily, right? In terms of the United Kingdom, um, we certainly have or three flights a week out of London Gatwick, nonstop to St. Lucia. And then we also welcomed just this past weekend, we welcomed back British Airways out of London Heathrow the first time in 25 years. So we're really happy about that. And out of the the Gatwick Airport, you will also find TUI as well. Very happy for your support or airline partners. Out of Canada, we're certainly looking forward to uh, fall resumption and Canadians. We are loving that progress that you are making. Um, this too shall pass. Thank you so much for staying with us and for being engaged with us. Thank you so much for our Canadian travel trade and and folks that love St. Lucia, we love you too. Connect with us, remember to connect with us. We are very, very happy to take any questions or concerns that you may have um, and make sure you drop it in the chat. Our team is also on and they are very happy to share any nuances, any particular um, preferences that you may have. We know that Folks do have lots of dietary needs these days. And so if you need a vegetarian option, a vegan option, then we can certainly assist you in navigating that as well. And we certainly do have an app as well, Raquel, which helps folks to find out where they can eat. Raquel, where else are we going? Because I tell you that chocolate is on my mind. It still has you, but right now we're about to move. And I know we use the word passion quite a bit, but again, our chefs in St. Lucia are filled with passion. This is the best word I can use to describe them. But Richard, we heard that you caught up with Chef Robbie, and he's a popular one around oh. here as well. So tell us how that went. Let me tell you, let me tell you, when you talk about a, a, a human being, who is connected to his roots and who is on a mission to keep that and celebrate that daily. I don't have anything more to say, but he has my respect and that food tastes so good. Let's, let's join Chef Robbie. Are you ready for a real culinary adventure? A Lucian culinary adventure? Well, let me tell you, Chef Robbie has been cooking up all the fabulous treats here in St. Lucia for well over 30 years. People don't even call the name of his restaurant anymore. They just say they're going to Chef Robbie's. Are they going to Robbie's? Robbie, welcome. Thank you very much. It's so good to meet you. Yeah. I've heard so much about you. And I love the expansion that you've done here. We're right in the heart of Rodney Bay, walking distance from a lot of the hotels. And it's just really good to see what you And the yachties. And the yachties. So when you come into IGY. So listen, let's, let's start at the beginning. I want to hear about you. How did you get into cooking, uh, first of all? Um, I, would, I would give the credit to my, to my two grandmothers because I was brought up with the two of them at different stages of my life. Mm -hmm. 
and and my mother obviously because she right. she's a fantastic cook also nice and I you know when she went away and studied architecture in Germany I got to live with my grandmother in Beaufort and learned a lot of the the fundamentals of, of you know Lucian cuisine you yes. know the, the, the really the, the chair of it, the heart of it. You yes, know? yes. Even before I went to culinary school, you know, when I got to culinary school, I realized why I was doing all what my grandmother taught me. Wow. So it was just to reiterate things that I kind of knew already, but didn't know why I, I was doing it. Right. And at one point, you lived next to the market in Castries. Is yeah, that that's correct? right. I was born and bred in the CDC. Wow. I, I never even went to a hospital. I, <laughs> you know, I came out of my mother's womb right in the CDC and wow. the market was right next door and I was an avid football player, you know, straight from football right by the market for fresh fruits and fresh food yes. and whatnot. And as time went by, as I grew, grew, you know, grew older, I started, you know, getting all that lovely food and doing nice creative, you know, meals for my friends and I. Wow, that must have really sparked your interest in food. And no, it didn't. I, no. I was doing it at the time and I was, it was just, you know. <laughs> Just came natural and I was just doing it and whatnot. And when I when I I never had cooking in the back of my head or being a chef yes. in the back of my head. You know, when I left St. Lucia, I went to study interior design. <laughs> you were on a football scholarship. You went to New Jersey, yeah, right? I went to, yeah, New Jersey on a football scholarship, and then to Bridgewater on another football scholarship, and decided I'd go to culinary school and. Gave you know just gave up interior design and went to culinary school. The rest is history, as they yeah, say. Yeah. And you you specialize. I mean, a lot of people say that your menu is the most varied on island. Pretty much, very eclectic menu, very diverse, very international, very local, yeah. very everything. You know, I try. My mom always gets angry with me for having so many items on the menu because she <laughs> thinks it's difficult to manage and yes. you, you, know, you know too much too much you know capital investment to get it get it all and have it. You know, but. I do it. I like keeping everybody happy. I like to have everything that's nostalgic to people. When they come right. back, they can get blackfish, they can get crayfish, they can get buigo, wilks, they can yes. get octopus, they can get, you know, shrimp, so lobster. I see sauce on the menu. We do pigfoot sauce, lumpy sauce, buigo what? sauce, octopus sauce. We know sauce is just a preparation, obviously. Mm. You, know, you can put whatever you want into a sauce. Very good. You know? And, you know, one of the things I saw you talk about was kush kush. Mm -hmm. which I'd never heard of before. Couscous is such a wonderful vegetable. Mm. Well, it's a root vegetable. And uh, my favorite one is the, the one they call a couscous divin, which is red wine couscous. Mm. And it's, it just melts on your palate. Yeah. I remember doing Derek Walcott's birthday party for him and mm. I made some, stuff, some, some balls out of yes. couscous and I stuffed it with lobster and I called it Derek's balls. <laughs> oh, he, lo he loved that. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue in cheek, I love it. I love and it. And if you knew, if you knew the character, you'd know that you know, he, you know, he really liked that. That, that. You know, he, he liked. He enjoyed. He that liked that. He was like, let yeah. me have some more Derek's balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, what, what, how would you describe your style and your approach to cuisine? Uh, I know, I know. I, as an artist, yeah. I know it's going to be difficult, but um, try. I, try for me. I get so much gratification out of keeping people's happy and keeping people's palates happy. Mm. That you know, it's almost kind of like a show off, you know. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love having everything there available for any and everybody to come. Lately, my one of my biggest sellers has been flying fish, uh -huh. and that's not easily found. And most people can't get flying fish regularly. We used to get a lot from Barbados and Jamaica, but the Japanese have fished it out in, in our waters, and we don't get it as much. But I have a little contact for it and. It's our biggest seller here. People come here and relish having fried flying fish with all my toppings, which I'm going to prepare for you down in the kitchen when Fantastic. we go down there. And, um, and uh, you know, conch is one of the big things in St. Lucia. The, the French come down for that every weekend. And our people love it also. All variations of it. I love doing a raw conch civish, grilled conch, curry conch, conch roti. You know, doing in all variations of conch and octopus and combinations of them and whatnot. You know, so you pay you paying tribute to I pay tribute all to your all your tribute influences to, tribute to, at Saint Lucia. Well, tribute right? to to the, to the Caribbean, tribute to yeah. Saint Lucia, and tribute to all our 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 bounty of fresh vegetables and seafoods and and you know and, and game and everything that we have down yeah. here. You know? Yeah, I know you judge a lot of the culinary competitions. Mm. Where do you see the culinary um, landscape 
going in St. Lucia. Well, um, what's, your, what's your expectation? My expectation is the same expectation that uh, my deceased uncle Desmond Skeet, who was the director of the Tourist Board, and one of his visions, besides being sports tourism, where he pushed and got there and Sammy, you know, to, to be out there, and that's, you know, that's, that's where Sammy got his push from, and he had the vision of sports tourism. He also had the vision of culinary tourism, mm. and I would like to be that extension for him. And I, it's also my passion. I'm so passionate about yes. cooking and the lovely and, and the wonderful flavors that you can get from St. Lucian cuisine or Dominican or all over the Caribbean, right. all the different Caribbean foods. Everybody has their own version of, of all cooking all the different meats and whatnot. You know, ours is unique. What, what's your greatest achievement? Let's take it back to you. My greatest achievement is what gives me the most gratification out of what I've done in culinary has been coaching the national culinary team and probably achieving the best results St. Lucia has ever, result, have ever received under my, un, under, my, under my watch. My next one or second closest to it would be the apprenticeship program that the SLHTA spearheaded. And I've had, and I was the one who sort of pioneered it and pushed it and was the one who kind of, you know, really embraced it. And I have over six, seven hundred kids out there working in cruise ships, in the hotels and all over. And it gives me so much gratification knowing that I've been able to impact young people's lives and being able to get them a, you know, get them a job and have some sort of livelihood. When their parents meet me in the streets, parents I don't even know, you know, thank me for what I've done for their kids. You know, I get goosebumps from that. That's, that's that's, I would think that these two achievements are my, my greatest achievements besides you know, making a name for myself and, and going, you know, going the distance that I've gone. Okay guys, so we're gonna keep it quick and simple. We're gonna prepare some grilled octopus and grilled conch and create a quick little salad or ceviche or, or a sauce if you, if you care, to, care to say, okay? There's tomatoes, we have onions, we have peppers, we have shadow benny, celery, a little oil, and whatever we need to just create that little ceviche. We also have it all mixed up in there already. So we could just take some of it and just mm -hmm. create a nice little sauce with it, okay? That's great on, on grilled fish also or grilled anything, okay? So it takes two seconds. We're gonna grill the octopus first and then we, the octopus has been parboiled till it's tender. And then we're gonna do the, oct the conch afterwards, okay? So here goes. We just get a little oil in there. Throw it on the grill. A little oil in there. Octopus hits the grill and, and gets a little charred. It's already tender and nice, so we just, you know, just we just basically heating up the octopus. The conch has to cook. The conch cooks in five minutes. Oh, really? Less than five minutes. Okay. I just let it. It's pounded already, so okay. I mean, it's, 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 so it's, it's, it's so tender. Okay. I mean, taste that. Wow. That's soft and nice. It already. is actually. It tastes just like a ceviche, you know. All right. So it doesn't even have to be cooked that much. Very nice. Flip that over. So that's pretty much cooked. Let's just put that piece aside because it's kind of much. And we have a combination of all this garlic, onions, everything. We already have it all mixed up in here, so we take some of it, let the oil get out, mix it in with it. Voila, a new sample. Push Voila. it, get, get your hands, and, and, and get your is, hands in there. This is how you eat it. This is how you eat it. Because when go. you crush it together, you get the flavors. Shadow Benny. Yeah, everything nice. Shadow Benny is the... Cilantro of the Caribbean. Exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. All right, so... How's that? Yeah, man, this is good. Can't go, this you, can't, is good. you can't beat that, that's simple. Either that is some cucumber salad, some garlic bread, or if you want to eat it with a full meal, that is that. You can take the conch when it's soft lad and do curry if you do rotis, do whatever you feel like, a pelau. I like I love a pelau with mm -hmm. conch. That's why the French like to eat the, the grill lobby with rice. Basically they create a pelau in their mouth. From here we do the same thing. We get this bad boy nicely chopped up. 
tomatoes and mm. and shadow benny and some people like that oiliness in it so they can have it some rice you get it all mixed up sorry i can't say anything i'm still eating there we go try this bye bye <laughs> don't take it away but this is what we ordered actually there you go nice and tender you can't go wrong it, it is tender actually yeah. And well, the char I love. The char, the char flavor is lovely in it. A lot of people get octopus and it's Priceless. too chewy. What I like to do is um, boil the octopus and then let it cool and then set it aside. People boil it and when it's still boiled, they play with it and then the, the, the tentacles and the skin pulls off of it. Mm. And you just get that white. And when the white is, is exposed, it just, it's kind of chewy. You know, so what I do, when the way I boil octopus is that this I This is not the texture I'm used to, but I, I love this. I chop it up first, yes. I chop it up first, then boil it, and then I use it. As opposed to, you know, doing it whole. Use your hands. You can't go wrong in that, right? You could try this at home, but when you come to St. Lucia, it's about Chef Robbins, all right? Mm -hmm. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. And keep on, keep on um, pushing our local flavors, man. Next time you come, we'll do some flying fish for you. Wicked, wicked. Thank you very much for chatting with us. Chef <laughs> Robbie's, let me tell you, when you're passing here, whether it's morning, noon, or night, it is jumping, the food is tasty, and we absolutely are ready to share it with you. So next time you're in the north of the island, make sure you check out Chef Robbie's. Robbie Skeet, big up. Local flavors. You see, you see, this is why experts just are able to connect more because you know all the secrets, right? Now stay with us because we have so much more to come. And for some of you, a culinary excursion is what it's all about. And you don't necessarily have to cook, but there's some where you can. Let's take a look at one of those really, really quickly as we leave one of our markets this is flavors of saint lucia and it happens in a fabulous kitchen up by greenwood terrace and of course your favorite tour company can get this arranged for you and you're going to be working with a chef and the rest of your party certainly takes turns but they can certainly watch the show as well so for someone who is really maybe not that good in the kitchen they could certainly sit and watch. see see how she's smiling because her colleagues are taking a look her friends i should say um so it's a really great opportunity to really learn a bit about saint lucian cuisine a to z and you literally start by going into that herb garden and gathering your ingredients see he's frying up the little plantains there love it and when you go out into the herb garden i mean there's shadow benny out there you heard um chef talk about that earlier that's the caribbean cilantro or culantra um shadow benny very very popular um in this part of the caribbean as well and certainly you're going to find a number of other herbs as well actually when i went last time they actually had a, a panadol plant you know, which actually is used locally by um, herbalists um, in the event that you do eat a panel, right? Anyway, um, the views expressed here are not necessarily those of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. Anyway, let's move on. So here are some of the valuable life lessons that you learn how to crack open a coconut. Come on, give it a whack. <laughs> and there you go you're sitting at your nice little bistro table while the rest of the cooking is going on and by the way that's going to be lunch anyway listen moving on out into the world of street food you cannot come to saint lucia and not go to a fish fry and they're really great options whether it be boyos or dukes there there are so many too many to name down in denry in Anne's Ray, there's some really good options for this local seafood we typically just say fish fry in the caribbean but you know any seafood that is in at the time in season will certainly be available um for you and those are the lovely bakes that accompany them and there are usually a lot of other side dishes that you will recognize from home those are the wegos um the fabulous um 
garlic sauce is poured all over that fish. Raquel, mm -hmm. are you hungry? Oh my God, I am starving. <laughs> Richard, every Friday, my family and I, we head over to Grizzly to get the catch of the day. So I want to recommend that to mm -hmm. all our visitors on today. When you go across, ask them, hey, what's the catch of the day? And I guarantee you it's going to be so flavorful, so enjoyable. Get your friends, get some bears, and just have a great time. It's seat to table all year round here in St. Lucia. Absolutely. And big up all the fisher folk. I say fisher folk because they're not just men. There are some women who are out there pulling in those nets. And also another one, which is a superfood, which we specialize in here in St. Lucia, is sea moss, which is farmed yes. typically on that East Coast. And did you know, by the way, you know what? Export St. Lucia has a fabulous channel and they show you how you prepare your sea moss um, whether it be the gel or for the drinks for your smoothies but also did you know you could do a no bake cheesecake oh wow amazing that's really interesting i love that let's move on i'm hungry right now let's head down to souffre because you know we have to head into that adventure capital there's some really good options there and um a great um potential for dine arounds for folks that are visiting and of course this is where our famous unesco world heritage site is as well as one of the world's few drive-in volcanoes the mud bath what's your favorite in Sufre? what's your um, favorite thing oh my to do? god that's a very that's a very hard decision but i'm gonna say the mud baths it's a must do for me when i'm in Sufre. and also waterfall hopping can't forget that <laughs> I think you're doing it a little too much though, um, folks. <laughs> that mud bath takes off 10 years and Raquel will go and do three mud baths to take off 30 years and she's not yet 30, okay? Go figure. Anyway, <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> listen, listen, we have another um, fantastic um, culinary leader. Um, he represents for the independent dining um, entities um, on island, this is Orlando Satchel, better known as Chef Orlando. We caught up with him recently. Let's take a look. Welcome to Soufrere. And once you're in the capital of adventure and dining, you have to make it to this fabulous eatery. My special guest at this time is a trailblazing chef, and this is definitely one of the very best independent restaurants we have here in St. Lucia, and dare I say, in the Caribbean and the world. My guest is Chef Orlando Satchel. You can call him Chef Orlando. How are you doing? Welcome. Well, well, thank you so much. Welcome. I'm welcoming you to your restaurant. Well, welcome to Share the Love. Thank you so much. <laughs> you told me that if people knock on the door, you will feed them. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, we're in a place, this is the best kept secret in St. Lucia, I like to call it, Orlando's, and we're about sharing the love. So I live upstairs, so if you do happen to be in Soufre and you're hungry, you knock at my door, I will feed you. <laughs> so it's about that policy, I mean, share that love. And you're not just um, serving food, it's a whole experience. Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about your, your, well, your style. Well, one of the ideas is that, you know, this is St. Lucia, and what we want to do is give the best of St. Lucia. So we don't want you to just come to, to St. Lucia for the food. We want you to come for the experience. So when you, walk through, when you come to Orlando's, we will not serve you food at Orlando's. We're going to give you a dining experience. And the vision of that is about a five-course taster menu which is everything is local. So about creating local ingredients from the concept from food to cuisine. The definition of food is that what you eat, you're hungry, but what you, when you're with cuisine, is an experience. So when you come to Orlando, it's all about the experience. Wonderful. And tell me a little bit about what you like to fuse. Actually, let's, let's start with St. Lucian yeah. cuisine. Yeah. Give me an idea, lay the foundation for us from your perspective on the influences of St. Lucian cuisine? Well, one of, one of my visions is always that um, we have an amazing um, ingredients. I mean, we have some of the best in the world. And what I do I appreciate over the years is that my farmers, my vendors are really the foundation of St. Lucia. So for me, it's important to go and talk to them. Usually I go to the, the, um, the market every day and I'll find Christophine, I'll find pumpkins, 
I'd find apricot, local apricots, I'd find coconuts, and these are all based here in St. Lucia. Cocoa, oh, amazing cocoa. So now what you gotta do is take those ingredients and put them together to showcase the best of St. Lucia. What is St. Lucia's? St. Lucia is about the soil, it's about the people, it's about the experience. So in that, we try to deliver that on a plate. Ah, and that volcanic soil. Yes. We've heard many times that that really does impact. Oh, absolutely. It, it, it really does. I mean, mm. I mean, I, I got to tell you, when my guests come to my restaurant right now, they're saying the carrots taste so fresh. Mm. Uh, the, 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 um, the vegetables are so, f you can taste the ingredients. Um, I think that is really some of the way what we deliver on the plate, you know. Um, right now, the restaurant, we don't even serve menu. There is no menu at Orlando's right now. What you do, you come to Orlando's, we will tell you welcome to Orlando's and we will offer you a five course tasting menu, no menu, I'm cooking for you. <laughs> so here's the price, if you have any allergies, and once you confirm you're okay, I'm cooking. So I'm creating what I want to create for you every day. And so that cocoa bean, the yeah. St. Lucian cocoa bean, one of the best in the world, yeah gets transformed oh, into those cocoa wings cocoa wings cocoa i was wings. going there with that <laughs> cocoa i've wings. heard so much about them oh, i haven't had them yet yeah, but i will cocoa wings i mean i mean before before we had an, an um, product company here we were doing cocoa wings long ago and the idea of taking local cocoa and infusing that with ginger and garlic and cocoa and rum i mean combine those together and soaking those and then grilling them oh and then serve with a plantain salsa nice yeah. it's an orlando's original folks. absolutely oh, well, absolutely so, i love that you said my farmers my vendors yeah, yeah. you really do see yourself as a as a connector well, as a I, link absolutely right? i think a lot of us in the, in the islands need to understand and appreciate um the the interest and the support from our local farmers our vendors have become so synonymous with St. Lucia. And I think when I've heard conversation about um, doing bread, for me, St. Lucia is a veg basket. Mm. We are a veg basket. We are what St. Lucia supports. Um, our agriculture is so critical to our infrastructure, what St. Lucia needs to support. And what I want to do is when, when our guests come to St. Lucia to discover agriculture through the farmers, through the fishermen, you know, make sure that those linkages are there to mm. showcase and when, when you come to St. Lucia, you're not just coming to a hotel or a location. You're coming to St. Lucia and that experience has to go across the board. So it's that's an vision. entire destination. The, the destination. Yeah, exactly. So in speaking of an entire destination, tell me some of the other great places here in Sufre. And you, you can go further north as well. Yeah, absolutely. Tell well, me. well, I will tell you for sure, there's a wonderful restaurant called Fedos, which mm. is in the community. Um, and they're, they're, I would call them the taxi driver's favorite. Ah. So, I mean, you, you like to taxi drive, any taxi driver, where you're going to take it to, you know, they're, they're going to take it to Fedos. Fedos is a, a wonderful local restaurant, been there a number of 20 years plus. They've been doing and delivering consistent Caribbean food. Nice. You know, so, what are we getting there? Give a paint you, you, you know, you're going, to get, you're going to get your local grilled fish, mm. you're going to get your, your yams, your dashin, your rice, mm. your macaroni. You're going, to, you're going to get a traditional home fair. Nice. So, I mean, I think that is really a nice place. Um, I also tell you about um, the Beacon mm -hmm. um, from a location. They're doing a really great location. I mean, I'll tell you for sure, they have definitely encapsulates um, uniqueness and where their, their viewpoint is. And their food is actually excellent as well. You know, if you want a, a buffet experience, Definitely, you're gonna. You're, gonna you're really it. underselling Beacon, though, right? Beacon is overlooking the pitons. Oh, well, well, when I say, un I'm, un just, I'm just joking. joking. No, 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 I'm no. Joking. But when I say underselling, I, mean, I, I think I always tell people: do not come for come for the view, the view. Come for the cuisine, and the view is your your bubble on top of it. Nice. You know, if we if we absolutely sell the view, you forget about the experience of the food. So I would rather sell the cuisine, and then go, wow, what an amazing view! Equally. You know what I'm saying? Got you. You know what I'm saying? So that's where my, my, I'm so beacon. I wanted to be surprised when I go to beacon. Go, go looking for the food. Wow, look, amazing food. And damn, look at that view. That is going to be your, you know, surprises are kind of fun. With chefs, we like to have surprises in food. So we like to have experience, uh, surprises in experiences. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Um, I also recommend for people who are vegetarians, you know, you can always come to Orlando's. We will do, um, vegan menus will do um, you know any kind of um, dietary need you need but if you're ever in Castries there's a wonderful restaurant in the um, center of town called Eva's. Eva's a good friend of mine she does amazing vegan ingredients you know and um, she is definitely a part of St. Lucia which you need to discover 
in terms of showcasing again local, but ultimately giving you that extra vegan special, a vegetarian special. Very nice. Tell us about your culinary journey. What are some <laughs> of your influences? Yeah, you know, some people are not familiar with me that I am actually a chef on a mission. My mission for the last 40 years is to bring Caribbean cuisine to, to more international recognition. I believe the best cuisine in the world is Caribbean. I believe that Caribbean cuisine has not been given that platform. So that, that, I've made it my gold as a young boy, wanted to cook Caribbean cuisine. My, my mother is Jamaican, my dad is Barbadian. Mm. I was born in Birmingham, England, lived in London, and now I'm living in St. Lucia. So <laughs> I am, like, I want to call myself the, the rounded Caribbean guy. Yeah. Um, I've been spent two and a half years in Singapore, mm. in a very first Caribbean restaurant in Singapore in the 90s. Spent time in Miami, been, been to Russia a few times. Um, all I've been trying to do is give Caribbean cuisine that opportunity. Um, I think right now, in today's world, we need to give uh, our local chefs. I've been doing this a long time. The future is, is, is in the future of the young people. Yes. And we need to make sure they understand the valuation of the ingredients. And to that end, you've been working with the National yeah. Culinary and, Team. And I'm working with the National Culinary Team to help them to uh, develop their, their ideas and make sure they understand that we can't just take um, creative care in cooking in competitions. We need to bring it back to our guests and to the restaurants. We can't just take it and say, okay, this is my plate to the competition, look at me. You need to come back now, when you come to St. Lucia, to get that creativity on the plate in the restaurants and make sure people appreciate the, what goes into it. When you deliver cuisine, there's time and creativity. When you deliver food, there's time and love. So you know what I'm saying? There's two elements yes, of there. Yes. But I think um, the future for us is how do we get, how do we make sure that when the guests come to St. Lucia, they get a total experience. You know, um, I see St. Lucia as a culinary destination. For me, it is really one of the few places in the Caribbean has managed to um, deliver cuisine across the board. Whether you like Italian, whether you like French, whether you like Indian, whatever you like, any kind of cuisine, you can get it in St. Lucia. But ultimately, for me, as a chef, I think when you come to St. Lucia, you should be able to get Caribbean cuisine at the highest level, even from the local level to the highest level. Fantastic. What do you have on your plate there? This is love. <laughs> this is love. Nice. Two, first rule of kitchen, never cook in a bad mood. Mm. If you're in a bad mood, you will express it in the food. So critically, this morning I've been up since 7 o'clock, creating my mood. <laughs> got you. So what you've got there is a um, pumpkin, um, mango, and um, pomegranate um, salad with a nice lo organic leaves. And also what we've got here is a cocoa brulee. Uh, and, and I believe you should, try, uh, you should try one of these. This is really good though. The experience is about the cuisine and you, you need to taste the freshness of the fresh mango from my tree. The pomegranate mm -hmm. is local, the mangoes is local. I mean, these are all about the Caribbean. So I really, I'm glad you tried it. Flavor. Very fresh, Very flavorful. Fresh. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the fruit and vegetable yeah, combination yeah. along with the, what are these? Ginger and you got, you got your organic leaves, yeah? And the ginger as yeah, well, yeah, which ginger. is so good. Mm. Okay. All right, this so is the coco brulee. Coco, coco brulee. Ooh, served with love, literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. served with love is critically important to so mm. give you a decadent mm. end, end of a service. And I, lo I love that little crunch there yeah, with yeah. the sugar, right? This yeah, is sure. so good. And this is St. Lucia. I'm happy it's this portion. That's what it is. It, it, it couldn't possibly be any larger no, because no, no. it's it is, so it decadent. Mm. Um, I want to encourage our guests when they come to St. Lucia, we're giving you an experience. This is local cocoa. You're saying creative to make a nice um, international brulee. Best in the world. It's best in the world, isn't it? Well, listen, thank you very much for all you do in representing St. Lucia thank so, so well. well. Thank you. And we look forward to many of you trying a fabulous cuisine here in Soufrère. Take note of all the recommendations Chef Orlando made, and definitely, when you can, knock on that door. They're not just serving food here, they're serving love on a plate. Are you inspired yet? So let me tell you, listen, call that travel professional and discuss when you can get to St. Lucia because this, this is important, right? And you know, some people are about the, 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 um, the food, the 
Some people are all about the drinks. It gives me great pleasure. And I'm not saying she is, but it gives me great pleasure to welcome my colleague from the United Kingdom, Nicole, because she's going to walk us through the island and give us some of her favorite watering holes. Nicole, how are you doing? You all right? Hi, Richard. I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. It's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I know you're having a bit of rain. We are, but <laughs> so I've make got it up for us. Rum punch, so I am ready Ooh, and ready to take your you. rum sandwich. <laughs> What's in your cup? Cheers. Take it away, Nicole. <laughs> Cheers. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our cabaway. A cabaway is a local term for a pub, bar, rum shop, or watering hole in Saint Lucia. Today, I'm going to be your guide, and I'm going to take you around. So come with me, let me show you some of my favorite spots in St. Lucia. Now we've prepared this graphic for you, which is on the screen now, but don't worry about noting everything down because we've got it available for you in the download box. So in the description of this, of this event, you'll see all the downloads, including a cocktail list that you can um, use to make at home. Did you know that the St. Lucia distillery story started in 1931 when the Bernard family built a distillery in Denry on the eastern part of the island? Four decades later, in 1972, the Bernard family merged operations with the Geese family who owned an operating distillery in Roseau on the western part of the island. After the merger, all production was moved to Roseau where the distillery can be found today. The first rum from the combined operation was named Denros, which was created from the first three letters of both distilleries, Den for Denry and Ross for Rosso. Denros Strong Rum is an unaged 80% ABV fire breather. They use it in a lot of rum punch, including the one I have with me today, and it's also widely available all over the island. The St. Lucia Distillers also produces about 30 rum varieties. This includes their core products of Bounty, Chairman's Reserve and Admiral Rodney. Now we'll be starting off our tour today in the south of the island. When I come off a long flight from the United Kingdom, one of the first places that I head to is to Island Breeze, Coastline Beach Bar and Grill or the Reef Cafe to, like, to get a nice cold piton bear. Named after our famous Twin Peak Mountains, La Bear Set Sea is the Bear of St. Lucia and a must try on island. The best thing about these bars in the south is that is the view. They all, you can enjoy a cocktail while taking in the amazing view of where the Caribbean Sea meets the Atlantic Ocean. There's absolutely nothing better than sitting here and listening to the sounds of the waves while, while enjoying a lovely cocktail. We're now going to continue our tour up the East Coast and we're going to be stopping at Savins Bay Bar, Glamity Bar, Plants Place and Falco's Bar. There you can find some of your favourite drinks like a smooth cognac, some vodkas, some gins and also some local favourites as well like our spice rum which is made from, you know what, I'm not going to share all our secrets, you've got to come to St Lucia to try it. We're now going to be moving up to the north of the island where you will find a bar for every day of the week and even twice on the weekends. So let's do a quick stop at some of my favourite bars. Verve in Rodney Bay, it's open air and very popular with the millennials, wink wink, and also those with a millennial state of mind. The atmosphere, the service, the customer service is, is just fantastic. It's definitely a place that I recommend if you are in the Rodney Bay area. Another one of my favorites is Ultra Lounge. Ultra Lounge is, a, is great for relaxing outdoors while there's also a, a nightclub inside complete with a psychedelic dance floor. You can enjoy the finest mixology at Ultra Lounge with live entertainment and also an amazing tropical atmosphere. Nothing beats drinks by the beach. And at Spinnaker's Beach Bar and Grill, that's exactly what you get. The view of enjoying uh, Raidry Beach while sipping on a Pito Rita. What more could you ask for? Now this is a hot new spot located in the Grizzly area. Oasis 101 in Grizzly is all about the decor. It brings a very Mary Poppins, South Beach Miami vibe with the private cabanas and the umbrellas in the ceiling. 
every day from 5 to 6 p.m. at Oasis 101 is happy hour. So definitely enjoy your two for one specials. Our next stop is to Joe's Grill and Chill, which is which sits on the popular Pigeon Island Beach outside Pigeon Island National Park. What makes this place stand out the most is the colorful writings on the wall. Yes, you can literally write your name on the wall to symbolize what a great time you had at Joe's. Joe's is famous for its tasty beverages, including the Bob Marley, which is a colorful layered cocktail, which is jamming good, as they say. Yeah, man. Now, before we head down to the, the west coast of the island, we must stop at Vele's Bar in Castries. While enjoying the views of the VG Marina, you must try the Vele's Buzz. This is a specially crafted cocktail topped with a bottle of your choice. This could be from any of our crafted bears or shandies or ciders on island. We'll now be heading along the west coast. Valais um, Sports Bar also has another location in Ancillary along the West Coast, which is where we are heading to now. So you've got the choice of two great, amazing sports bars that you can check out in St. Lucia. Doolittle's Restaurant and Bar. Um, at Doolittle's Restaurant and Bar, you will fall in love while enjoying refreshing drinks and taking in the crystal clear waters of Marigo Bay. Richard mentioned this earlier, but did you know that Doolittle's Restaurant and Bar was named after the 1967 Dr. Doolittle movie where some of the scenes were filmed? Did you know? Did you, did you really know that? Heading down the West Coast after leaving Doolittle's, a couple of places I love to stop at. Pierre 28 Bistro Lounge in Souffre, Club Whispers Restaurant and Bar also in Souffre, and Kalime Beach Bar and Grill in Choiselle. You can enjoy some amazing, um, specially crafted cocktails there while also enjoying some amazing food as well. Like you've heard previously in the rest of the present, um, the rest of this event, food and, and beverages go hand in hand. So you've got amazing beverages to top your meals with. I hope you enjoyed my whistle tour stop around my favorite bars and watering holes in St. Lucia. And um, don't forget the um, directory will be available for you in the description. Cheers. Love Cheers, it. Richard. <laughs> well done. It's five o'clock, everybody. Not quite, not quite. So listen, <laughs> when I get off the aircraft, when I get to St. Lucia, the first place I stop is that bar at Savannah's Bay. Miss, yes. Miss Abby makes the best peas dal. Don't tell anybody I eat fried chicken as well. <laughs> and um, <laughs> really good. So going out of St. Lucia, coming back into St. Lucia, and at Tommaso, we have to get our Creole bread. Yes, whether you're going on food. the west coast, or whether you're going on the west coast or the east coast, there's a bar for every day of the week. Well done, Nicole. Thank you. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, I was nine and three quarter pounds at birth. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. We'll see you later. Thanks Thank for that. Richard. That was brilliant. Bye. Brilliant. So we're going back to Groselay, folks, and this is one of my favorite. See that Creole bread. See, this is why our Caribbean family love to visit St. Lucia, um, because the food is just amazing. Let's head over to Groselay. This is a spot that's been there for a very, very long time, and we sometimes order our lunch there. This is Golden Taste. Let's go. We have um, a succulent barbecue ribs we have on the menu every day as well and um, it comes as a meal. Um, we, sometimes we serve it with fries, whichever you prefer, every day. It's very nice, it's tasty and it's one, it's one of the um, tourist favorite, barbecue spirits. Here we have the red snapper. We serve it as a full meal. It, it, it's a meal we have every day. and. Um, you can have it as well with whatever you prefer. If it's just salad and veg, or rice and provision, anything you want it with, you got it. Whatever fish we have on island for the day, whether it's dorado or tuna fish, that's what we do. If you want it fried, you get it fried or grilled. 
and we serve it as a meal as well and whatever you want served with it we have it there ready for you to go we do that every Wednesday it goes very well it's one of our num number one meal so thank you for visiting us and um I'm, I'm sure whenever whenever you come over to the Golden Taste Restaurant, we are ready for you. You, you get test, um, tasty food. And thank you very much for visiting us. What an adventure. Let me tell you, what you're getting today is chock full of goodness, but it's only a sampling. It's only a tasting. Pardon the pun. Raquel, what's your favorite? Because you order from Golden Taste all the time. Yes, <laughs> yes. I don't know if anybody peeped that menu, but still backs. Let me tell you on a Wednesday, our office goes crazy over some stew backs. And you eat that with some green figs, some dashin, cram provisions. Mm, 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 mm. I'm sorry to sell them out, but I just had to let everybody know that's what we eat on a Wednesday. <laughs> I see the chat lighting up. Everybody wants to know. Listen, if you really want to eat local and you really want um, the favorite dish, um, we got to tell you, stew bags with, yes. with, with stew bags. ground provisions. Okay. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Raquel. That's brilliant. <laughs> and thank you so much for spending time with us, Raquel. Our resident foodie, Raquel John. You are just a light to the world, and it's such a pleasure to work with you. Travel Partners, Raquel John, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Richard, so, and thank you, everyone. All right, we'll see you later. All right, so now it is time, folks. It is time for us to meet our final guest for today. This is Wadi Sakor. He is chair of the Independent Dining um, committee, which is part of the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association. And he has a few words for us. Let's take a look at that. When I came first to St. Lucia about 15 years ago, you realize that, you know, there is a lot of talented chef, talented cuisine, different flavors, which had the perfect storm with the people from St. Lucia, which is very warm and very welcoming to the island. So it just make a, a, a explosive mix, in my view. La Mesa came uh, as a personal project, to be honest with you. Um, the intention was to bring something totally different to the Caribbean and to St. Lucia. Uh, although we, we have excellent cuisines here, there was, some, there was nothing uh, like La Mesa, bringing all the Latin American flavors from Argentina, Uruguay, all the way to Mexico. Passing from Colombia, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Cuba, uh, which is, although the bases are very similar to Caribbean cuisine, it's add some other flavors that, that does not exist in the Caribbean. And in the menu you have, you know, gourmet arepas, which is very, arepas is an indigenous uh, cornbread, but this is stuff gourmet wise, originally from Colombia, Venezuela. Uh, you have also great steaks like ribeyes and, um, and strip loin serves here. You have ceviche from Peru. You have pabellón from Venezuela, which is uh, very similar to Ropa Vieja out of Cuba. Um, then you have tapas from Spain. Uh, so this is the kind of you know cuisine we're trying to bring into San Lucia. I personally have been working with local farmers for over 15 years since I came to San Lucia from the time on the hotel side. Uh, but then we have been creating gentleman agreement with uh, serious farmers, not the ones that you know are taking it as a hobby. And we have been trying to work with farmers to tell them what to grow for us. Uh, although the restaurants individually are small, uh, as a whole we, we pull a lot. Uh, so we have been trying to work with about five, six farmers, 
trying to tell them, listen, I, I need you to start growing this for me, it's not existent, some herbs that doesn't exist in the island, and then trying to secure some kind of income to those farmers too. To really have a gem here in culinary experience. Like I said, just the mixture of the food with the local people is just amazing experience. Uh, you can find n none of this in any city in the, in, in the world because just the, the genuity of the, the people, the, the approach, the friendly people that serve you and take care of you, uh, combined with the food that great chefs are bringing to the island is, is a perfect storm for me. Here you can get any, any kind of cuisine, to be honest with you. The beauty of St. Lucia is that all you get is more, uh, even, even though they are well-renowned chefs, you get uh, more comfort food. So you are from the Indian side, which is like, for example, you have restaurants like Spice of India, Rasmatas, uh, with all the spices and the action in your mouth. Uh, then you have a really great, great steakhouses, uh, like Big Chef, with top of, top of, uh, top great steaks out of the US, Midwest. Uh, you have, you know, international cuisine like Matthews, Buzz. Uh, then you have Chinese like Memories from Hong Kong. Uh, you have sushi and Japanese from Rituals. Um, and then also you have on the Italian side, you have, you know, Elena's and Amici with uh, high-end, very fun and, and obviously amazing Italian food. And on our side, you also have, uh, you know, we brought when we opened a big, uh, some time ago, we brought the South American flavors into it. You also have, you know, the, the, from La Mesa, but you also have, uh, you know, the, the healthy part of the uh, spectrum, like Cafe Ole, uh, Blue Monkey, and uh, Feli Belli. The people is unlike any other island in the Caribbean. Uh, my kids are born in St. Lucia, my wife is St. Lucia, and I love this country like mine. And that's why I work so closely with fishermen, with uh, local farmers, with livestock uh, 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 entrepreneurs, and try to push the local industry a little bit more. just great how everybody really, really works together to deliver the very best service to you. And speaking of which, one of you is going to be coming to St. Lucia, packing your bags and staying at the Rabo Hotel by Hotel Chocolat. Are you ready to find out who that is? There are some other great prizes, don't worry. Are you ready? Are you really ready? Let's go and find out what Nicole has for you. everybody welcome thank you so much for being with us here today thank you richard and to our partners for such an inspirational event this fall we have 11 amazing prizes to give away today so if you're still with us thank you for sticking it out all attendees have been entered into a random selector and my team will be assisting me in picking a winner are you ready are you really ready have you got your drink ready i've still got my rum punch let's go straight into the prizes the first prize is a chocolate hamper courtesy of Hotel Chocolat and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. And the winner of this prize is, drumroll, Lisa Duffy. Congratulations, Lisa Duffy. You've just won yourself a chocolate hamper courtesy of Hotel Chocolat and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. Prize number two is an Epicurean basket courtesy of Little Chef. Who would like to win this amazing basket? 
and the winner is Donna Adin Lofi. Congratulations, Donna Adin Lofi. You've just won yourself an Epicurean basket courtesy of Little Share. Prize number three is a hundred dollar gift voucher or equivalent in the currency of your hometown, courtesy of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. And the winner is Kimberly Herbert. Hobart, my apologies. Congratulations, Kimberly Hobart. You've just won yourself a hundred dollar gift voucher, courtesy of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. Prize number four is that amazing banana classic recipe book, courtesy of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority that Richard showed you earlier. And the winner of this amazing book is Einka Reed. Congratulations, Anka Reed. You've just won yourself this banana classic recipe book from the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. Prize number five is one complimentary night stay at Orlando's Purple Cottage with a private dinner from Chef Orlando himself. How amazing is that? And the winner of this fabulous prize is... Sarah Crow. Congratulations, Sarah Crow. You've just won yourself one complimentary night stay at Orlando's Purple Cottage with a private dinner by Chef Orlando. Congratulations. Prize number six is a bottle of rum, courtesy of St. Lucia Tourism Authority, a bottle of Chairman's Reserve Rum. And the winner of this prize is... And the winner is Sharon Sudin. Congratulations, Sharon Sudin. You've just won yourself a bottle of Chairman's Reserve Rum, courtesy of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. Prize number seven is a $100 gift voucher or equivalent in your currency from Chef Robbie's Par Caribbean Pirates. And the winner of this prize is Wendy Laporte. Congratulations, Wendy Laporte. You've just won yourself a $100 gift voucher courtesy of Chef Robbie's Caribbean Pirates. Prize number eight is for airport arrival fast track tickets for two, courtesy of the wonderful Barefoot Holidays. And the winner of this prize is Larissa Parks. Congratulations, Larissa Parks. You've just won yourself fast track airport arrival tickets for two, courtesy of Barefoot Holidays. Prize number nine is a fantastic 400 EC dollars towards a dining experience at Big Chef Steakhouse in Rodney Bay. And the winner of this prize is... The winner is Lisa Vermack. Congratulations, Lisa Vermack. You've just won yourself 400 Eastern Caribbean dollar towards a dining experience at Big Chef Steakhouse. Two more prizes left. We've got another bottle of Chairman's Reserve Rum to give away, courtesy of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. And the winner of this prize is... It is Robert Williams. Congratulations, Robert Williams. You've just won yourself a lovely bottle of Chairman's Reserve Rum, courtesy of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. And the final prize, the one that we've all been waiting for, is a five night stay for two at Rabo Hotel St. Lucia from Hotel Chocolat. Are you all ready in the chat box? Are you all ready? And the winner of this prize is, drum roll. The winner is Neil Watson. Congratulations, Neil Watson. You've just won yourself a five night stay for two at Rabo Hotel St. Lucia from Hotel Chocolat. Congratulations to all our winners and to all our partners for contributing such amazing prizes. Now over to you, Richard. Congratulations to all our winners. And uh, certainly having joined us, you are a winner as well because all those directories and resources are ready and just waiting for you to conveniently download. The experience and inspiration continues next Tuesday when we go under the sea with a deep dive into scuba diving in St. Lucia with our experts. So until you join us 
next Tuesday, same time, right here on our YouTube channel, Travel St. Lucia. Make sure you subscribe, okay? Life is short, please. So stay inspired and get to planning that culinary vacation. And always let her inspire you. Yeah.